Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in episode 10 and playing TNO the East is Red. I'm your host, Mr. Reads a lot. But we actually have quite a bit of read right now. Honest talk. Comrade Xiao Bing, Chairman Mao is looking at you differently and the chairman knows all about those thoughts of yours. So you must examine the chairman's opinion more. Pick the right time to say the right thing and don't let the chairman down because I may not be able to bail you out anymore. Lin Biao, the chairman just can't stay away from him. He's Gao Gong's understudy. Without him, the chairman can't get a foothold on the central committee. But if you're disappointed in Lin Biao, all Lin Biao has in his heart is his own business. He doesn't care about other comrades at all. If this continues, I'm afraid he'll do something out of the ordinary. Comrade Zhang Jing, who is simply a hungry wolf, is endless on the subject of wanting power. As if by entering the political bureau and taking all the work into his own hands, he can help with the president. This is too childish. While one person under the all, under another is all under her own imagination, there's no such thing as working like that. Karma Xiao Qi, I just can't talk about. I can only pick up the next best thing. Bo Yi Bo is a shrewd man, but his methods are rough and his heart is too strong. With the previous lesson of Gao Gong, he will never accept another comrade similar to Gao Gong standing in front of him. And will continue to follow Karma Xiao Qi's path. Slowly changing course. That's what's not good. What does the premier mean is that I should be more productive, proactive. No, I don't mean that. Xiao Ping, in the future of personal changes, you must remember not to be hasty. Not to rush to the forefront of everything. Your ability is unrivaled, but it's not suitable to stand at the front of the ch as a uh, chief commander. You should be more of a good f firefighter, always finding a way out for the whole party and army. I understand. Although be you be Bo Yu Bo is like this, I have a less favorable impression of the others. I've already recommended to Chairman Mao that you and Bo Yu Bo handle the day-to-day -day work together and you have to make sure that he can take over smoothly. I don't dare to pack my bags. On Gao Gong's side, I can get Zhu Zhong Jun to stabilize him, but I don't really know how you Bo Yu Bo very well. I'm especially afraid that people on Chao Chi Xi will clash with me. I can't see these words of Yo Bi Yo. Bo Yibo, face to face, right now, the situation is difficult. You must advise him to take the big picture into consideration. If you really can't take control of the situation, go to Chairman Mao. I'll definitely do that. Hard way to go. What do I need? How'd you put Zhu and Lai next door to me? All of you, all of you get out. Kang Shang's horse hissing echoed throughout the corridor. Before walking to the war, the first thing that entered Dang Xiaoping's eyes was a broken magnetic pieces all over the floor, and the nurse who stood outside the door had lost her words. Not long after a teacup exploded, his feet scarring the nurse. Scaring the nurse. What is, does he do this every day? Dang stopped in the doorway to inquire with the nurse. Not every day, but every time he makes a scene, it's especially bad. Dang nodded knowingly. Still, there was another splash of porcelain and the lid of the cup was thrown out, causing him to sigh. He stepped through a piece of debris in the hospital room, only to see Kang and Shang's sitting on a hospital bed, not hot tea splashed all over, leaving the tea, stees, uh, tea leaves uh, sticking to his neck, eyes red, grimace, hand raised the teapot immediately to throw. Dang Xiaoping hurriedly bent over to avoid, but the teapot didn't fly to him, but along with Kang Shang's hand, Karabati rolled to the foot of the bed. I called half a day, no one cares about me. Kang Sheng's words were tinged with a sobbing tone as if he had suffered a great deal of aggravation. You're so angry, even the dean is afraid of you, let alone these children. Saying this, Deng Xiaoping asked the nurse to go and called the cleaning to come up, and he wanted to cure Kang Sheng's heart. I'll come and see you today. What do you want to say next to the president? I'll try to convey what I can. Oh, I have not, no next time after this time. You think carefully about what impression you want to leave on the chairman. Really? Really. Seeing that Deng Xiaoping was not lying to him, Kang Sheng's mouth spat like a machine gun. Don't remove me from such a committee. Don't brand me as a kind of revolutionary. Don't draw a cross on my name. Don't burn my pressure. I'll always be loaded to trim him out. I'll try my best. Don't let Luo Ching Chang take my place. He's doing Lai's henchman, a traitor. Is this the attitude that you take when talking to the chairman? I'm doing it for the revolution. I didn't say you weren't for the revolution either, but how do I pity you as my business and things are changing when it comes to the chairman? You say Zuan Lai is a traitor. Do you have any proof? There he is. Kang Ching immediately ripped open the quilt and the hospital gowns to feel around and pull open the nightstand drawer. I bed under the bed to look for a new few minutes. Finally, a bewildered face to a Deng Xiaoping said, I forgot where I put it. I'll give me a second here. And, oh, cup. I almost had it. There we go. This is De in Deng, Xiaoping, Deng Xiaoping's eye simply nonsense. He's also no longer nonsense. There's no one as one to say and two to say too. Chen Lao Tong cannot even speak, but not, also not like you. The central government is not unreasonable. Your honor is guaranteed bias, but you have all. But you have all. But you have demobilized a chunks of committee to investigate just for a little historical issue that even I don't remember from decades ago. It's not that it won't work. Maybe you have evidence, but your reputation can't be guaranteed by central committee, but still think about it. Deng Xiaoping took out a pen and brush and dotted these three words, or these words, and gave King Sheng confirmation. Stepped into a shirt pocket, turned his head, and went to instruct the nurse. The Kang Sheng situation is special in that I must be patiently taking care of the, uh, the patient. Break anything to find him to compensate, head whoever scolded, who apologized for, in short, do not allow Kang Sheng accidents. Hearing the promise of the nurse repeatedly say yes, the heart of the remaining palpitations at the same time thinking, how can they directly find such a big cadre? Deng Xiaoping left, Kang Sheng cowling at sound, resounded through the hospital corridors, and the number of cups dropped unabated. Use plastic cups, not ceramic. Like women. 
At the main gate of the central hospital, the guards routinely stop vehicles for inspection. Out of the driver shows his papers. It was allowed to pass, but the car to stay outside. The car slowly stabilized on the side of the road. The passenger sat at a small sweep while unbuckling the seatbelt while instructing the driver, Yang, please let away from here. I'll come out after I get the medicine. On the way to the hospital, Xiao Sui couldn't see many pedestrians through the window. Now pushing the door and stepping out of the car to look around. Realizing that the street had never been as quiet as it was today, she thought she had come to the wrong place, but on the other side of the gate. There was a group of old men clustered in Greek clothing, as solid as concrete sculptures. The heads were uniformly draped with scraying sideburns, the headlines unrecognizable, and their sides heavier than one. So we walked to the old group of people, five or six meters away from the place, only to hear them muttering and muttering. The name of the central leadership casually spit out their mouths and said the words even more surprised her. Once Chen Yi dies, we people will be scattered. <clears throat> I thought it was Yuan Lai who was critically ill, but I didn't realize it was two of them. You must pay more attention to the memorial service. The two of them? Who are they? Surprise would be surprised. So we did not have the heart to think about this and hurried to the hall. But the people she once met under the front door simply made her head explode. Under the hospital wall, Zhang Qing, arms crossed in front of her chest, rushed to the wall of a bearded man, accusing him of having a little sense of responsibilities, not just like training children. As soon as he turned his head half to the lecture, the cross-eyed Zhang Qing stared at himself. So we pretended not to see, buried head forward to rush, which thought nor did escape Zhang Qing's palm. So we see me how not to greet? Tiru! As engines roared that little sweet heart and ever troubled, can only timidly move feet towards Zhang Qing. Sir, director, I did not know today you are here. What? Didn't Zhao Zhi tell you about my schedule today? I think you lost your head on vacation. Told me it's uh, who forgot. Mr. Chen is dying. You didn't know? I really didn't know. Then what did you come to the hospital for? And get medicine for my father. Suddenly, an exclamation interrupted Zhang Qing's chortle that was about to come out of his mouth. The doctor's out. The white clad messenger who had announced that death did not make any move, nor did he make any verbal indication, but merely stood far away on the steps of the main entrance. Seeing the leaders notice, and the doctor turned his nose up and ran in the shadows of the hall. The people in front of the main entrance were like a whirlwind, hooting and hollering as he rushed towards the hospital building. Zhang Qing also immediately opened his legs and followed, allowing, uh, leaving Sui alone in the silence mess. The bearded man didn't run, he patted the white ash on his back and woke up with a soulful Sui. Still not quick enough to catch up with your director, Jiang, your vacation has been cancelled, Secretary Gal. Take the medicine you want to take. I'll have my secretary send it to the car for you. The earthquakes are starting. Like the first meet. Since the hospital interview with Zhu and Lai, unprecedented anxiety transferred from Deng Xiaoping's body, anxious that he paced around the room all day, drawing circles, teas, and rice. Retirement is such a big thing, how does the premier uh, alone count for him? Is it not forcing him to be a loner? After dinner is the customary time to a walk, but the atmosphere of the river sets in Zhu, Chen, Kang, and other people after a series of accidents is dull. Deng Xiaoping purposely walks side by side with Chen Yun, writing his distress on his face and asking him for help. Chen Yun naturally knew about this, but he waited for Deng Xiaoping to take the initiative to open his box before things could be discussed. The Premier approached me to talk once. Talk about what? He wants to retire. Is he the only one? No. Who else? Deng Xiaoping uh, held his thumb and finger, forefinger. These two. Chen Yun nodded knowingly. That's a bit different. Isn't this the same as Gao Gong? And you, if, I, if you don't get it right, that's a route error? That's why I'm particularly fretful. Have you asked anyone else about the matter? You're the first. These people in the center, so far there's no normal retirement like Zhu Gue Ya like to die in a, with a title. Peng Zhen was an accident. Gao Gong made a mistake. Both of them left normal retirement. This is our party's historical baggage. Sometimes I think if we hope if we people never had met each other, would there have been so many things? I'll take that as BS. At a moment of silence, Chen Yun spoke first. You have to make everyone understand that retirement isn't a punishment. It's not a person leaving. Treatment, uh, reputation, sons and daughters and whatnot are all arranged. Otherwise, you can't get this done. I'm not afraid to ask for a little price uh, so high that I cannot step down. There's really, there's no such thing as pie in the sky, besides there's only one who really wants a high price. You better think about how to solve that one. Let's get the discussion going in the center first, or I'll be in the dark. Night falls, the riverside pedestrians are almost extinct. Deng Xiaoping could not see Chen Yun's face, I didn't know what he was thinking. At the same time, some vague thoughts came to mind. The two walked together on the road uh, back. When is Chen Yun's memorial service? Tomorrow. Be on time tomorrow. Return to vote heroes, which I think are the last time. So if you this again, please go ahead. Trouble spectators. Chen Yi's body was placed in the middle of a farewell hall, a bright red party flag covering the body. Surrounded by flowers, hanging behind the black and white photo of a slight smile. Ah, oh, crap. If you want to read about better industrial expertise, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so we finally got that better. <coughs> uh, um, hanging behind the black and white photo of a slight smile and eternal glory, four big words. Chen Yi's partner, Zheng Ji, led a group of family members standing in the west side of the body, but they still could not stop the tears. From the right arm we are all the way down, Comrade Chen Yi, from the beginning to the end of the banner, Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, Chairman Mao's revolutionary line of loyalty is unsw unswerving. During the long revolutionary war, Comrade Chen Yi has dedicated his life's work to the party, to the people of Northwest China and to each other and et every one of our comrades. It is with great sadness that we mourn Comrade Chen Yi. After Huang Keqing, 
A representative of the army delivered his eulogy. Mao Zedong walked up to the podium, assisted by Secretary Guang Feng. A clerk called all the folds of the Zong Shan suit. Up to tell Mao Zedong to put on all matters, rush to the memorial process, woeful but contains opponent pl plainness. Mao Zedong's eulogy is also less official than the previous one, and all those words of remembrance are given to him. Especially when discussing the Red Army side by side, all the old comrades present were moving to tears. But according to the procedures of the memorial service, began to look around the spirit of the week. The morning music filled out every gap in the hall. Some people are heartbroken, and some people's hearts are like ashes. The crowd from a column slowly creeping forward. Liu Xiaoqi walked to the head of the line, was the first to come to Zhang Shi to pay his respects, and then pulled over one of his new friends and said, This is Government Zhu uh, Yang, who came back specially from Gansu. Uh, Zhu Yang, not missing a beat, also asked Wang Ji for her condolences and shook her head. Shook her hand. Zhang Shi and the honor kept it in courtesy. According to the farewell hall, parked a wheelchair on which sat the bone thin Zhu and Lai, the central empathy license to observe the entire memorial service. Witnessing the crowds come and go and having nothing to do with himself, the dire friend felt with a chill on being on the sidelines. What a good show, Zhu and Lai. Revealed an immense new reaction, he thought, but immediately refuted by himself. Alas, what does it matter though? Apologizes Zhang Shi for Chen Yi. Zhu and Lai had no more time to lament, only wanted to get his heartfelt retirement underway. He eyed the host, Deng Xiaoping, which caught the latter's attention. Deng Xiaoping came next to Zhu and Lai and asked him what it was up to. Do you have any arrangements for the ones I told you about before? I've already shown your comments to Chairman Mao, who didn't approve of them. I still want to get the meeting started now, but there are too many things going on lately. Be sure to hurry. All this is up, is up to the Chairman. So that's not good. I was going back up. GDP is slowly rising in the breakthrough. The memorial service of Chen Yi and Kang Sheng had so exhausted the central government that they didn't bother to come to the meeting to discuss how to retire. The conference room was yawning and spewing out unbrushed breath, which, mixed with the odor of burning tobacco, smelled very disturbing. The fact that the president arranged for us to have this meeting shows that he believes in the heart of the premier's opinion is a big topic and also represents a new situation that has arisen for our party in a new period, so we can't afford to not give it careful consideration. I hope that the group will take this matter seriously. After carefully deliver delivering his open remarks, Deng Xiaoping first invited one of the most unexpected people to speak. This person was Jiang Qing, and today was the first time she had participated in decision-making on behalf of the Supreme Leader's opinion, having both seen a pig run eating pork. Whether or not the Premier's health will work is not up to anyone's personal say so, nor does the doctor say so. It depends entirely on the opinion of the party central committee. Now, the revolutionary task does not allow retirement that cannot be retired. We have in front down the big and small things that are all waiting for the Premier to solve. He left so that other comrades how to do. The same applies to Chairman. And what can retire but not the Chairman Mao? Of obstinacy is the only weapon Mao Zedong relied on after the aging. He passed 100% to this day and night to watch over the left and right of Jiang Qing, especially the staff saying nothing. But the good news is that Jiang Qing's words were not Mao's words. There's no need to obey them 100%. When Jiang Qing was speaking, Bo Yibo and Liu Lantao quietly mocked, she took us all as dead people. Hmm. Liu Lantao waved his hand and let him keep quiet, but he immediately spoke as the eyes of the group were focused on him. He did not have any more accidents. The premier's opinion is work, worth thinking about. He believes that. By retiring himself and having the young people come up, he will be able to realize the long-term development of the base area. And then we can expand on that. Those old comrades who can't do anything in their positions also retire together and are replaced by new people who are young and strong. Well, it really should be more solid and solid. My statement was followed by a coughing fit to clear the throat. The delegates each played their own little game. No one slipped on, slipped on cigarettes, no one slipped on tea, and even the water wall waiter also stopped. Obediently stood by the kettle and did not move. At this time, Zhang Yi's rough voice, like a bull, rushed in. Some of the old man in the position has been uh, done for more than ten years. He left the unit, not, not even a backbone. Would have to be recultivated? Is it not to add to the chaos? This time, the conference room directly exploded in nests, and the people talked a lot <coughs> about it. A lot of people have thrown all the work to the secretary. This office, that office, less the person unit still running. Wang Kecheng fell out of the breath after saying this. I wouldn't need a secretary, Zhu Yu Yi. She you, she, you, hemmed and hawed, treating the other's words as a joke with no intention of discussing them at all. Working for the revolution for decades, now you'll say you'll let it retire after you, are you being reasonable? In the face of the scene may be more and more chaotic management, Deng Xiaoping's heart silently sighed. Holding his forward to turn over the document, just waiting for the people underneath to stop, but he did not notice the sulking is Li Lisan's face pi piling up until Li Lisan Hala kicked away the chair, stood up and shouted, I'm retiring. Li Lisan sent an outburst to the entire audience. And then he slammed the door, shutting everyone else's his heart with a loud bang. At this point, Chen Yun kicked Deng Xiaoping with his foot, pointing his finger towards the door that Li Li Sada pushed open. If you press him a little more, the matter will be accomplished. Make him write an inspection? Yes. In the name of Chairman Mao, this opportunity. There's a crap ton of reading. Wow. Oh, maybe we can't do this more. Really. 
Probably because they're injured anyway, so. Post war military infrastructure. That'd be nice. <coughs> Last review. And the reason why democratic centralism has never been implemented is probably because party members like me, who are grossly unqualified from the root, are still high to office official positions. And the far-sighted chairman is unable to let go of me, fearing that one day the party will be led into a dead end by people like us, and so it harbors misgivings about democracy. Whatever democracy advances, our party reaps a victory. Whatever ebbs, our party suffers a setback. So much time, so many lessons have been taught me this simple and easy to understand truth. Socialism without democratic centralism is a disaster. In the dead of the night, when I think of all the struggle meetings, I am enlightened. The Trotskyites, or the revisionists, sickened agents who were in the leagues of the village of Japan, the power was about what be. We took the road of capitalism. Every one of those men who carried an incomparable word spewed out of their mouths. How good it would be even, even if one of those crimes were true. Therefore, I know perfectly well that the president would never treat me so badly, and that those who give me criticisms must also have no, must have no one behind them. But they've made it all uh, up, but this is unjust. A man will always love himself, and then others will love him. A man will always save himself, and then others will save him. I'm not a self person, but I've lost the ability to follow the chairman's great revolutionary line. I'm not in any way qualified to take up the position handed over to me by the party central committee itself. Still less, I'm an example worthy of emulation by others. I asked the chairman to lower his guard and agreed to my application for retirement. I would no longer want to, con to contemplate, like a blazing fire, why I'm still alive. I want to save myself. Anger and angst trap Mal. Order approved. The application for retirement is sending Comrade Lizan to the psychiatric department of the 31st Hospital for recuperation and treatment now. Healthcare quality is slowly beginning to improve. That's good. Poverty's looking, you know, poverty rate change is not bad. Trouble. No other chance. Pull a string. Ever since Lili Sun's review and Zuin Lad's submission were placed on Mao Zedong's desk, they are instructed not to be made public. There's no impermeable permeable wall in the world, and rumors of Lili Lisan's blatant defiance of the chairman are already elsewhere, everywhere. And the news of Zuin Lai's letter also spread, with people speculating about what was written in the letter. Some said that the old Zhu Enlai was softening, begging Chairman Mel not to liquidate him. Some others said that Zhu Enlai wanted to find a way out for himself and hurried to enjoy, to enjoy his old age. Some even wanted to know something about, about the bottom line. They went so far as to say Chairman Mel was too old and should not continue doing it. Windy rumors about the infirmity of old age drifting into the air and from time to time and cover the scars of Mao Zedong? That's scars. He didn't want to admit he was old. He hated being called old, but after seeing the ambulance leave the venue that day, he finally realized that old age had also struck him. And was dismayed to find that it was beginning to struggle to stand on his own, if not assisted. Whenever the meeting was empty and the door was closed, Mal tried to hold it to his fat, abby, fat body and get up from the sofa on his atrophied legs. On the floor, I'm able to get up and then slowly sink into deep remorse until an attendant found him and put him back on the sofa. These two documents are like a pair of plywood clamped Mal Zedong. If you think about a large group of old revolutionaries in the party, at this time, the public reviewed the contents of their retirement. Regardless of whether they agree with it, it is equivalent to directly drop a bomb, everything would be blown up in the sky. In that time, even Lin Biao will also abandon themselves. Thinking of this, Mal Zedong read Lee Lassan's review again. I really can't let go of figure out of the party. The struggle of vying for the position chairman of the front has attracted public attention. Both Mao and Liu withdrew their, from the election. Regarding the extraordinary achievement of the revolution and the collective wish of all within the party, their party sentiments and positions remain. React resoundingly and resourcefully. <coughs> Since the retirement meeting held by the Central Committee attends political air permits Jian. At Lin Biao's residence, the Lin office is busy as usual, receiving information from all sides for his boss, Lin Biao. Yu Yun Cheng, Yu Yun Yun Heng, a key secretary, opened a file back containing Chairman Mao's latest instructions, was surprised when he saw the contents. Chairman Mao wants to retire. Retreat from what? Chairman Mao wants to retreat from what? Causing his colleagues around to stop what they were doing, they gathered around the secretary Yu to see what kind of news he had received, only to see that the notice blatantly read. Chairman Mao agrees with Zhu Enlai's opinion on the retirement of old comrades in the party, and at the same time, no longer stands as a candidate for the chairman of the front. Huh? What's going on? Chairman Mao's retiring. What are we going to do? Is Chairman, the Vice Chairman Lin retiring? The crowd was so confused, I didn't even notice Yi Kun standing in the doorway. Hearing that the atmosphere of the Lin office is abnormal, she rushed to check the situation, and when she arrived at the place, she bumped on the secretaries holding a small meeting and immediately questioned them. Whether well, it is retiring or not retiring, what are you talking about? Director Yi, look at this. Yu Yen Hang. Notice her hands held out. Yi Kun was brought to hit the eye of the see the face change, panic, and left the crowd and went straight to Lin Biao's room. Entered the door and saw Lin Biao was slow and still in methodical circle reading the documents. Yi Kun angry, grabbing her husband's pen, the notice to the table pointing and said, I say the day before yesterday's meeting you have to go. You're not lazy, you not to go. And look at what a big deal. Lin Biao saw another face of displeasure, Yi Kun, with a handkerchief to wipe the hand of the pen road. Very unhappy to take off his glasses, as if he knew in advance to ask Yi Kun a rhetorical question. What, the president agreed to Zhu Enlai's retired? Man, not only is Zhu Enlai retired, but the president also retired. Uh oh. Lin Biao. Glanced through the red letters of the notice and understood the reason why Yi Kun was in a hurry to see himself. But to be honest, Lin Biao was also a bit at a loss. You don't know but that the matter of retirement has now become so significant, and more importantly, how Yi Kun again got the information before himself. 
To return the favor to his wife who had worked so hard before and after, let him be opportunity to be mysterious and pulled out a letter folded several times from his pants pocket, unfolded it, laid it out, and pressed it on the top of the notice. I didn't go to the meeting. Uh, but I know everything that happened at the meeting, and this is the minutes that Wu Faxian took down for me. You're left with a stiff upper lip. Can you know about Chairman Mao's return before I do? No, I'm asking you what to do. Then Biao's brain spun rapidly. He didn't know what to do. Let nature take its course. Four words came out of his mouth. Huh? Do you really think and want to wait for Liu Xiaoqi and Bo Yibo to eat us up? Do you have anything on your mind? What nonsense are you talking? Then Biao's mouth was dry. He grabbed a cup of water to cool down, and only after a long moment of silence did he have an idea in his mind. Let Yang Dezi prepare a list of the leaders of the various military districts and branches and come to the Lin office in person tomorrow afternoon. Plus Yang Ching Wu, Wu Faxian. I'm going to discuss the retirement candidates with them. Is Ding Sheng coming? Who? No one knew he was to bed earlier. He'll come if he wants to, if not, forget it. Chairman Mao's decision could not be changed, but Yi Kun was set aside to see that Lin Biao did not go get such grain. After getting the instructions as if he had gotten a treasure, he finally turned his anger into a smile, leaving Lin ba Biao behind and walking out of the room, turning back to secretly rejoice that it was all up to him to make Lin Biao decide in such a short period. The head of the army does the army's business. Yeah, that's a very decent way across for uh, this here. You know, it's costing us quite a bit of money. And quite a bit of political power. Oh my god. Oof. Take your head to the party. Pending a decision. <coughs> then Biao's desk on the left and right documents. The left hand side is scheduled to be the newly promoted army group commander list. While the right hand is scheduled to retire the list of veteran generals. Hands on the forehead. Behind... Uh, sitting behind these two documents, Lin Biao looks gloomy while in front of him has just sent the document is ready to listen to the instructions of Secretary Zhang. Uh, Qin Ji Wei, Qiu Huizhou, uh, Wu Fajian, these are the available generals. Comrade Han Jian Chu also returned from Sichuan, promoting these people up the military commission is to prepare for the war of liberation behind. The central government has no objection is good. Lin Biao nodded, just this retirement list. So why are these two comrades, uh, Zhang Aiping and Zhu Guanda, circled separately? Zhang did not dare to hide anything in front of the chairman of the military commission, only to report truthfully. This document was first sent to the Central Committee for review. The Premier's instructions say that their age is not particularly old and asked the military commission to. Lin Biao's face is getting more and more severe, and Zhao Zhang's voice is getting smaller and smaller. Requests the military commission do what? His voice was unusually cold. Please ask the military commission to consider the question of attention or departure of these two comrades at his discretion. Lin Biao shook his head. Military reform is not a child's play. I opened the back door for them today. Tomorrow is it. Is it any 70-something division commander who wants to find me to stay? The day after tomorrow is the 80-something-year-old regimental commander who is also looking for me to stay on. Zhao Zhang's voice began to tremble slightly, but the party central committee. Lin Biao's biting eyes shot straight at him, causing him to freeze there and hesitate to spit out the latter half of their sentence. It should have represents the central committee. Am I not but another? Fine, fine, fine. I'll leave them unscathed. It's all you who would be responsible. Lin Biao's dissatisfaction with the political green has risen. Bang Xiaoping, we have no premiere. Kinda sucks. Uh, no other chance. In response to such committee's call, senior military commanders who are too old will be retired, and new commanders will be welcomed to a new chain of command. In compliance with Comrade Lin Biao's instructions, all personnel scheduled for the list will be retired, and military reform will be further strengthened. Put a link in a string. In response to such committee's call, senior military commanders who are too old will be retired, and new commanders will be welcomed to a chain of command. According to the Comrade Bo Yu Bo's opinion, some veteran generals will be retained in the chain of command to complete with a sm uh, the smooth handover, but military reform will be temporarily stalled. Um, I'm going to go with pulling a string, maybe? Just because that's what we did earlier in this campaign, so... We didn't want uh, anti-military revisionism, so... The rapid retirement of veteran generals is not conducted to a smooth transfer of power, and during the period it's necessary to consider a smooth transfer of power. A smooth transfer of power would ensure the continuity of the chain of command of the army and sudden, uh, avoid sudden policy shifts that would have a knock-on effect on the combat effectiveness of the army. Yeah, we'll go with that one. And there goes the French state. Yeah, French Civil War. Nice. Let it burn, 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 burn. Able people walk more, work more. In order to ensure a continuous and steady renewal of the party's leadership, it's important to strengthen the development of its young leaders. This involves selection, training, and examination to ensure that they have the capacity and qualities to lead the country. Now, with the formation of new leadership, different factions and views may emerge within the party. How to deal with these internal conflicts should ensure party unity and stability is crucial. 
who is a German. The sound of voting began being sung and counted rose and fell in the auditorium. This was the second time that the National Defense Front held a general election for its chairman. Unless time, Mao Zedong and Liu Xiaoqi both withdrew from the, na from the line of candidates. After more than an hour of waiting, the election results finally came out, and the presiding officer of the conference, Wang Renzong, announced that a loyal old man had been hidden for a long time and had become the new chairman of the front, and that was Zhu Dei. Before Zhu, a certain few delegates looked a bit stunned. Obviously, the general election is for the rejuvenation of the cadres. How come they chose an even older one to come to the stage? But they didn't dare to make much noise and only applauded along with the others for the election of the new chairman of the front, Zhu Dei. Leaning on a pitch black walking stick, walked trembling to the front of the stage into the watchful eyes of Mao Zedong and Liu Xiaoqi. While breathlessly opening and closing his hands, as applauding, he nodded slightly to indicate that he was immersed in a brief moment of joy with the crowd as next made a speech. Not I, Zhu Dei, covet this position, but as a comrade to unanimously reluctant enthusiasm inspired me for the cause of the revolution to add bricks and mortar again. After finishing his speech, he gasped for breath and stood staring at the delegates as if he had forgotten his words. Such a cold field caused Zhu Dei, behind Deng Xiaoping's face, to instantly sink, hurriedly toward the lower side of the gesture to let his people leave the applause. Surrounded by a round of applause, Zhu Dei swayed for a long time before slowing down. He nodded again, and squeezed the sentence out of his mouth. Well, good. I nominated Commander Yo Bo Yibo to take over as Premier of the State Council, and that's it. Then he walked off the podium and returned to the seat with a twist, placing his body solidly on the chair surface. Soon it'll be use business as usual, probably. Been some personal changes among the leaders of the Central Committee. Please inspect the National Diplomatic Panel and click on the current sub ideology icon and view the current composition of the Central Committee. Please inspect the National Congress of the CPC and the Central Co People's Government Affairs Co Committee. Oh! Clay. Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva. Daily political power goes way up. Way up. Or probably. Well, I don't know about way up, maybe actually. Plus 0.5 is not bad, but admin efficiency goes down by 0.2. That's not good. I don't like that. Grassroots Democratic Reform. Shangxi Battle Plan. They come in to introduce strategic minutes. Grassroots Democratic Reform. Karanga said to move. What is this? Even this. Oh, well. Bo Yi Bo. During the construction period since the 8th Party Congress, we've made great achievements in the base areas that not only recovered, but also became 5 or 10 times richer and stronger than before, however. It should be noted that at the grassroots level in rural areas and even in urban areas, the excessive delegation of power to order local cadres to carry out the production and construction has brought about many negative problems, and many grassroots cadres have begun to think in terms of arbitrariness and abuse of power. Therefore, I would like to put forward to the central government some opinions on the grassroots democratic reform. Zhang Chun Chao. The cadres do not have a deep understanding of the democratic core of Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. And they not only give orders when things go wrong, we should mobilize the masses to fight against this kind of corrupt cadres and carry forth the spirit of proletarian democracy, Han Guang. There are black sheep in the cadre force who must improve the professional quality of our party cadres and resolutely clean up a handful of corrupt and de degenerate elements. So, as to achieve the goal of coming from the people and coming to the people. Well, let's do the battle plan first. Everyone's like, yeah. Fresh blood. The cultivation of young leadership should start from the broader context of society as a whole, entering, starting from the most basic levels of schools, enterprises, and communities, encouraging young people to participate in local uh, uh, social services, voluntary actions, activities, and the management of public affairs, so as to enable them to practice their leadership skills in real-life environments. Such experiments will not only develop their organizational co coordination and decision-making skills, but also enhance their sense of responsibility towards society and the concern for the public interest. At the same time, young leaders need to be groomed at all levels and sectors of the party in the front. This involves providing them with more opportunities to participate in the decision making and implementation of major projects, or put them in charge of a particular area of work. In the process, they can gain experience, and face challenges and solve problems on the ground. Autumn Wind. In the past, the president taught us to get rid of dogmatism, but made no mention of empiricism. Now, the main danger is that empiricism hinders the development of the front. Comrade Zhao Ping handles his daily work with Chairman Mao's permission. And there may be such and such a th wrong thing wrong with him, so old comrades should be more tolerant not to always say that he's a bad man according to inertia. Since the beginning of the purge, the party's been completely abuzz. Those old people who were put under Deng Xiaoping's purging scope were not willing to leave power, but then they either visited personally or were sent to do someone to do it on their behalf. In the name of Deng Xiaoping's unfairness, and occasionally went to Zhu Enlai's hospital room to ask for a statement. In the face of raging public opinion, Zhu Enlai knows that all the trouble is caused by him. He does not ha dare to have a bit of negligence. As long as he's still sober, he receives one by one the service of the humble, but in fact, to ask for a punishment of the people. Day after day, a verbal sparring. Zhu Enlai dragged down the last point of the spear and the gas. Early this morning, the nurse opened the curtains of the war on the time. Zhu Enlai woke up very slowly after a night's sleep. He slowly opened his eyes, so the eyes of Deng Ying Chao is uncomparable pain to his eyes. How do you feel today? Still no strength. You want to see Luo Chen Cheng yesterday? And now he's here, waiting outside. Please, quickly, please come in. Deng Ying Chao came into the door and told Liu Chengqing 
They hurried to the side of the hospital bed. Zhu and Lai also braced his spirit and sat up with the help of the nurse. Looking at the premier whose cheeks were deflated, Luo Ching Cheng's eyes instantly filled with tears. Zhu and Lai did not expect the old subordinate to see his first face to cry to cannot help themselves. He had to be relieved when asking about work. Usually I did not get sick. Did not expect this disease to delay so many things. Luo Ching lost karma to expect you to come is to ask. The day before yesterday I sent out the application, but Chairman Mao is not approved. Luo Ching Cheng wiped a handful of teardrops from his cheek. Chairman Mao has improved it yet. The chairman said that Premier is too tired and told you to take a good rest. That's what I thought. Zhu and Lai looked down at the bed sheets with immense disappointment. Going around like I am I was, I was also causing trouble for others. But I don't feel at ease. The news in the newspaper and on the radio can't stop this idea that I want to see for myself. After so many days of experience, I can only see one thing. The future is all in the hands of the younger generation, so I must go to the Central Party School to meet the new trainees. See Zhu and Lai. Uh, still does not change the idea of running around. Deng Ying Chao can no longer hold back. She leans over in Zhu and Lai's ear and quietly says, You treat others as close comrades, but you must also put yourself in this heart. I understand you, but you can't spoil yourself like this. Small family, I can't take care of it. Everyone else I didn't take care of it. My comrades in the party are going to poke me in the backbone, so my heart doesn't feel good. When I finish meeting the new cadets, I'll have to call in certain comrades to explain the situation. Luo Chin Cheng cannot block Zhu and Lai's eager expectations. He can only try to unload the Premier's concerns. I'll go and talk to the President again to try. After giving Luo Ching Cheng's affirmative answer, Zhu and Lai's tall spirit loosened up, closed his eyes, and fainted. Frightening Luo Ching Cheng rushed to the call of bell of the nurse's station. After careful examination by the attending physician, it was determined that there was no problem with the premier's health. He'll wake up again. Now hey, we're looking a little better here. Death GDP ratio is a little better. Inflation is uh, going down, which is good. Expand party schools' admission. As the party's main institution for training its cadres in leadership, the party schools are the best basis for young cadres to learn Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. Expanding enrollment in party schools will train more young cadres for the party in the front, ensuring that they're equipped with the party's basic theoretical knowledge, practical experience, and class consciousness, and contribute to the long-term development of the party in the front. We'll expand our membership by a thousand members per month, so please go to the NPCPC party system to see the current number of party members. Choosing a new principle, the policy of expanding the party schools has received wide acclaim from all sectors of the party schools, but uh, of the community. But an enlarged organization of party schools will inevitably mean a complete replacement of the leadership team. Grandmad Triple X, who is politically reliable, loyal to the party, and has outstanding organizational skills, will take up the post president of the party central school, central party school. It's a party school. Also, since we're here, the plus fashion now. Zhang Chun Chao, come at Hang Wang. Zhang's plan. Grassroots democratic reform. Versus Han's plan. Purging grassroots. Auditing and guiding decisions with high quality. Liberate poor groups. Disclosure sessions. Masters of balance. Encourage speaking on stage. I think to be more well, the path we've done, we might go with Zhang's plan. Royal Democratic Reform. Carmen Zhu Yang's speech at the Ninth National Congress pointed out the style of the middle grass, middle and grassroots cadres inherited from the period of front building, who were monopolistic and manipulative, who had become more and more serious, that the challenge for feedback from the masses of working people had been deliberately blocked, and that many of the brigade secretaries had a serious I am boss mentality, who were not only indifferent to the people, but also secretly paid bribes, and some of them even fought against the surveillance. The researchers sent to the grassroots by the central government. Kermit Zun Yang's report recommended that this authoritarian 
Trench should be stopped immediately. That Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought should be taken as the guy. The spirit of the proletarian democracy should be carried forward, and the movement for democratic reform at the grassroots level in the countryside should be carried out. I think I'm going to go with Zhang's plan. People are generally okay with it. Cool. Destination after graduation. Resolution on senior cadres. Retirement. We added the miscellaneous laws. Nowhere to go, huh? Alright, so now we lose even more money because of that, which uh, was just my bad. Let's keep improving our society. Why is this all terrible? Maybe that one too. I don't know. South Tijan District, huh? Interesting. Huh. Buy a new principal. Zhang's plan. Our people have long ceased to be ignorant. Thirty years of revolutionary training have brought unprecedented maturity to the people who are fully capable of and desire to govern themselves and do not need anyone to be a pedagogue above at all. What we do need is to remove the shackles from the people's minds and let them speak their truest thoughts. Huh. Plans for Shang-Chi. Oh, what? 1970. Achievements attributed to me. The establishment of the ANLR has forced the Japanese imperialists and the Nanking pseudo regime to speed up their intervention in the Northwest, and full scale war between us and the enemy is now at hand. Now that the eternal enemy problems of the front have come to an end, it's necessary to study the next plan of action on the eve of the battle. I don't think we're really ready for a war, but we do have a cup of Earl Grey tea to keep us nice and uh, satisfied, to say the least. It's not a lot of surplus, no, is it? No, it's not. Criticize. Well, we can punish them. It's gonna hurt us just a slight bit, but still. Oh, wow, look at this. Mao's faction. Zhang Qing Lin Biao. Bo Yibo Liu Lang Tao. People's faction Hu Ji Wei. Yu Guang Yuan. And Deng's faction Chen Yun Li Zhang Yan. Interesting. I wouldn't mind training for war, though. War of Liberation, huh? When is a lot of political power here? There you go. There's just only so much we can afford, you know? Just using a new principle, huh? Oh god. Nowhere to go. We wrote home Jian. Yang Yin Kai had a deep dream. She was lying on her mother's lap. The old house was lit with a damp oil lamp, lamp, but she could not see her mother's face. She could only smell the faint smell of the fragrant pancreas. The house was cold and her mother's body was warm. She held her mother a few more points tighter. Mother had been cold. The fire was already lit and did her a little longer. Are you still familiar with today's lessons? How school? Mother gently stroked her back. Yang Yin Kai didn't remember her mother asking about this, but it was just a dream. True or not, she suddenly didn't care. Mother, I've had a bad life. Everyone puts a face on me. I've eaten so many thought of sufferings, I've suffered so many strange sins, and done so many things I don't want to do. Yang Yikai did not know why she said so much in her dream. Was it because it was a dream she dared to speak out? A kind of silence that went all, all too familiar with surged up to the tip of her nose again. To hold back, to hold back, but just couldn't hold back any longer. Let herself cry out. She's neither Dr. Yang nor a diehard writer. It's just a little girl in the bold deer. Just a moment of capriciousness at the moment, I cannot. Mother, one by one, passive events surfaces in front of her eyes, but Yang Yikai no longer wanted to mention it. Dreams will always wake up. They don't use them use the time to talk. She just wants to stay in the warm embrace for a little while longer. A little longer. Her mother didn't say a word, just kept rubbing the top of her head, waiting until Yang Yin Kai's painful crying slowly turned to whimpering before she spoke softly. Zhao Kai, do you regret it? Yang Yin Kai raised her head in a daze. Regret? Perhaps she has thought re thoroughly regretted it countless times, regretting that she didn't save a few more people. Regretting that she didn't should have been too careless in politics. But even if she had missed it a thousand times, she wouldn't have turned away because the end of the road was already closed at hand. She closed her eyes tightly as if she made up her mind and one of the last tears slipped from the corners of her eye. I don't regret it. Proofily, a new era is coming. With what you have not seen, I will see for you. So be it. Mother's voice seemed to continue to smile. It's time to depart. Ying Ying Kai suddenly felt as though she'd been slightly pushed and stumbled at the soles of her feet. And the dim light of the old house suddenly brightened. It wasn't light, it was a sun at noon. Comrade, are you alright? A female cadre helped Ying Ying Kai who nearly fell. I, I, I'm fine. You look up fatigued. Maybe it was fatigued. Ying Ying Kai wanted to reach out and rub her bleary eyes, but she refused. I realized. She was still clutching something in her hand, the red cover, stamped in large gold letters, although it was too late to, for too long. It came to Yang Yinkai's hands, late justice is still justice, for her or China. I volunteered to join the Chinese, Chinese, 
Communist Party of China. We're gonna need more political power than this. We just don't have enough. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Badakshi appointed as Afghan Prime Minister, huh? He's still pretty good, though, right here. Happy New Year, everybody. A gathering. Zing Zhijin often feel piping his living cage in the middle of the cracks in the Manchu. Even the front and back of out of so many people. Li Dazao, Ji Hongcheng, Chu Anping, Yu Luoko, Bai Peng are fellow to break free from the jaws of the Japanese invaders just waiting, bleeding towards the run and sinking future. After the Citizens Association was disbanded by the Manchurian Cavalry Division, a small number of activists who had not been arrested secretly set up the Comrades for Democracy, and Zhang Zijian was among the lucky ones. Thinking back to the humiliations of the 60s, she couldn't help but go to Xi Jinping or someone to give a public speech, but she was always stopped by the other members of the Comrades Association. After all, Zhang Zijian did not have a body of steel, and the bullets of the Manchurian National Army were not long for the eyes. After five years of this ordeal, at the end of 1969, some strange rumors began to circulate among the citizens. First, that the communists had now secretly infiltrated Bai Peng, and were preparing to drive out the Manchurian garrison. Next, the Caliber Division headquarters had been moved from the Chengde, and the dominating mounted police had not been in Bai Ping streets for a long time. And next, that they disappeared. Next, there were rumors that the disappeared Matt Rogue were not, was not dead, and then he joined the Communist Party. The more the news spread, the more mysterious it became, and the people of Bai Ping became more and more agitated. As a de facto leader of the Comrades for Democracy, the young Zhang Zijin was privy to many secrets unknown to the general public. The Communists did have a secret paramilitary organization in Peking called the Urban Engineering Department, which would contact the Comrades for Democracy from town to town and send supplies of Marxist, Leninist, Mao's revolutionary writings. The Comrades Division headquarters is indeed withdrawn to Cheng Day. That was because Manchuria was shrinking its defenses to concentrate on the remnants of the resistance in the Soviet Red Army in the outer Manchuria. And Shuluk. Shuluk was indeed killed. Unlike Chu Anping, who was publicly executed, he was secretly shot on the banks of the Yangding River. And then thrown into the river in a bag by the J J Japanese, if not for a couple of Japanese soldiers. He was secretly shot on the banks of the Yongding River and then bagged and thrown into the river by the Japanese. Read again. If not for the fact that the few seniors who were lucky enough to escape arrest defied all odds and stood guard of the Lugo Lugu Bridge. I'm afraid the whereabouts of Lu Yu Lu Kui could have become an unresolved case forever. When 1970 began, Zhang Zijin once again stood at the head of the Luguo Bridge. This time we'll take back our freedom. Ooh, growth is not as high. That's not good. Heaven is clear, that was the opening day of the 70s, and the young students from Tsinghua, Peking University of Fujian, and other schools as well as a considerable portion of the citizens of Peking, followed the guidance of a secret leaflet that had been spread half a month earlier to Lugo Bridge, only to see a woman in her 40s standing on a makeshift podium near the bridge, holding a large white speaker, uh, and loud speaker in her hand. Federal citizens, Comrades for Democracy, it's early morning of the, the first day of 1970, and are standing to claim a future free from oppression and poisoning for our Bai Ping. We recall that seven years ago, we, were in ba we in Bai Ping made a great sacrifice in a struggle for democracy and freedom. More than 3,000 citizens of Bai Ping were innocently arrested, and those who were arbitrarily executed counted for as much as one third of them, including Mr. Chu Anping, an old time of our Citizens Guild, and also Mr. Encounter Rogue, who has hitherto been nowhere to be found. That's right, the man has been wanted for seven years by the Republic of China Police Force and the Manchurian National Army. He died here in this Yongding River. The venue was in uproar. It was. By the Lugo Bridge, the several seniors of our Democratic Comrades Association arrested the great danger of being arrested for violating the curfew. It was here that the remains of martyr Yu Luo Qi were salvaged from the shore and buried in Situ. Situ. Zhang Zijin's voice turned mournful. Yu Luo Qi's death was so gruesome that I cannot bear to describe it any further, but his death truly taught us all a lesson. Zhang Zijin took a deep breath. The invaders used their bullets to create blood, but used their blood to bathe their ambitions. The been erupted in hoots and hollers, but Zhang Zishen still shouted against the hoots and hollers with the more powerful loudspeakers. Citizens and friends, it has been 40 years since the Japanese used a 40 Japanese yen hourly wage to lock us in shackles. The command of the Japanese lackey Manchurian National Army has already been retreated as Yeho. There's still any reason to continue to obey the so called military control? Seeing that the venue was already hot blood and restless, Zhang Zishan raised his fist, uh, uh, right fist high. Down with the Japanese imperialism, drive with the Manchurian invaders, return my free by ping. Return my free by ping. Underground resistance Peking and Tangshang regions succeeded in claiming the region. Uh, we need more generals, don't we?
Nowhere to go. Luo Ching Cheng's advice finally pressed Mao Zedong, agreeing to the approval and denial of the same swift, speedy transmission to the hospital. Mao Zedong, with a lot of concerns that not want Zhu Enlai to be seen around anymore, he sent Zi uh, Gongzun to check on Zhu Enlai's condition and gave him a final word of advice. But when Zi Zhongzun came to the hospital and saw Zhu Enlai fellowly dressed in the hospital bed, he automatically gave up the idea. The barber just moved away from the haircut and beard and was wiping his face with a hot towel. Up to a month of suffering, Zhu Enlai's appearance completely changed. Gray face covered with a block of brown aged spots. Black and eye sockets deeply sunk under the high cheekbones, a pair of shining pupils no longer existed. Ji Zhong Jun held Zhu Enlai's hand and made a final farewell, followed by the bed and the doctors and nurses surrounded by under those ambulance, was pushed to the next destination of the Central Party School. However, Zhu Enlai's time was running out. Halfway through the trip, Zhu Enlai once again fell into a coma. His blood pressure spiked to 160, then slowly dropped. His body temperature fluctuated, and his was scattered in a week. The driver stopped the car, and the doctor carried out the last resuscitation, but did not help. It was a gloomy day, and the ambulance window was broken by the drizzle. With all the thoughts, with all the words, with all the regrets, Zhu Enlai faded his bright gaze and fell into a deep sleep. Deng Ying Chao gently kissed her lover's forehead and closed her eyes for him. The ambulance turned on and siren and turned around, slowly returning to the hospital. The beeping sound attracted citizens on both sides of the road who were about asking who the person the car was carrying. The people who got the answer suddenly went blank and followed the ambulance without saying a word in this way. The solemn crowd gradually gathered into a long river, flowing slowly. Memories become a river. Eternal remembrance is next. Yeah, it's going to be charismatic. Symphony number no. 9 in D minor, no, opus 125. When Lu Honggen walked into the former side of the All China Federation of the Trade Unions in Hankou, she felt as if he had returned to Shanghai more than 30 years ago. At the same time, although I could not say I was full of energy, but at least I was much better than the present disheveled appearance. At that time, he spent more than half his time playing the piano at various venues, barely making a living. He didn't play his music reviews, he rehearsed a few plays, and assumed the position of conductor. Although it had been a long, a long time since he picked up the slender yet heavy baton, Lu Honggen, Felt that today was once again picking up the baton, only the report, repertoire of this rehearsal did not consist of notes. The first movement is not too fast, and slightly solemn and allegro. Grim and powerful, the comrades silently picked up their weapons from the northwest and put on their final touches before setting off. The atmosphere is not very cheerful during those years of underground struggle. Many, many figures had disappeared senselessly and called like a dog, and like a dog. And since the comrades' refreshment drew to a close, the small bumps, the whispered conversations, the sadness, intense wrestling, and the gradual convergence of light in the struggle. The second movement is extremely lively and allegro. Probably a presto. Because of the oil cross and the commons surrounding the northwest, the pseudo government of Nanking had long since drawn most of its forces towards for defense. There were even fewer guards of the government of Wuhan. The crowds quietly approached the guards and surged in with the commander's orders, charged and shot together. We have a soft harmonic of timpani and uh, strings as jumping shots and bright chants seem to make people see the white of the fish's belly in the east on a cloudy battlefield. The third movement is the soft panels of the song after a short battle. The victorious party had to wipe away the dust from the salves and clean their gaping wounds. Lu Hong did not stop a moment to patrol around the wounded. He Woods questioned himself. Perhaps this was the wrong revolution. Perhaps his decision to waste some more lives. Perhaps the time was not yet arrived and the team still needed to settle down and hibernate, but the situation could not give him time to think it over. And for the fourth movement was coming soon under the deep thoughts of romanticism. The fourth movement is a quintessence of the whole work, the sharp plate. The resistance of the pseudo government is gradually quelled with the combined efforts of the comrades. The skull also tears off its veil of darkness hastily and slowly amidst a gradual cessation of gunfire, revealing its luminous skin, Lu Honggen, in front of the microphone, excitedly and solemnly proclaimed the victory of the People's Alliance for Justice, the liberation of Wuhan, and the promise of her freedom. So, Wuhan, huh? so this is the People's Chorus. Oh. So, we have Peking over here. So, they're slowly rising up independently from against each other, or from the other group. Democratic Socialism. The Heisheng. Interesting. Now, I wish we had them under us, but still. Eternal Remembrance. On the second floor of the hospital, Zi Zhong Zun, uh, Yang Cheng Wu, and Lin Feng had just sent Zhu Enlai's body to the morgue. After a simple farewell ceremony, the two stopped by the window and looked at the public gatherer outside their hospital for a long time. In a nearby photo studio, grieving people trampled through the threshold just to buy a posthumous portrait. A large picture stood next to the hospital door, a wide hardwood frame engraved with the people's premier four gold characters below the flowers, cigarettes, alcohol, food, and so on, all the offerings that can send the public's condolences. As the evening approached, a crowd of the people who came spontaneously from work to offer condolences grew larger and larger, carrying wreaths of flowers and personally sheltering the burning incense and candles under umbrellas. Cars filled the roads around the hospital, honking their horns. At that moment, the sound of neatly organized footsteps shocked everyone's heart. Under the cover of darkness, a group of PLA soldiers jogged into the hospital gate, set up pro blocks to separate the crop from the small hut where the sacrifice was to be made, and began to carry out the civil defense instructions issued by the central government. The old raid rain clad soldiers took down the wreaths, put down the photo ceiling film, and prepared to move it to the car, swept the offerings in a sacks and finally chased off the umbrella carrying guardians. The rain doused a candle light, and the crowd that had witnessed what soldiers had done stirred. Why did you take away the wreaths? Who told you to do that? 
Sadness turned into outrage. To protect the scene, the agitated crowd surged forward, cries pushing and shoving. The angry shouts rose between the soldiers and the citizens. Some people slipped and fell in the rain. The chaos caused a stampede, and the individual soldiers who were left alone were not only pushed but also bruised and swollen. Prepared for the ride, the PLA quickly withdrew thick wood sticks from their vehicles and formed a human wall and rose. The car loudspeaker also broadcast, Carmen citizens, the central government understands your feelings of mourning Premier Zoo, but today is not the official date of the memorial service. Please leave the venue in an orderly manner, otherwise the police will enter the venue to maintain order. Shine did not work, and the chaos continued. A large brick flew towards the military vehicle, smashing off the horn and piercing the eardrums of everyone with the sound of electricity. The sound was like a startling gun, and for a while, stones flew about, smashing the military vehicle with a clanking sound. The situation was reported to the central government by the officer in the car, and 15 minutes later, received an order from the superiors. The police reinforcements have arrived. You can withdraw and prepare to disperse the venue. Soon, a huge photo was forgotten by everyone in the corner. His cheeks were wet with rainwater, and under his gaze, the police swung the sticks and smashed them into the crowd. The ringleaders, whose heads were bleeding and arrested, put, put into the military vehicles. And the people screamed and scrambled in all directions as chaos, which was utilized by a few kind of revolutionaries and enemy agents, was completely ended and the mission was accomplished. I'll be waiting for everyone at the heaven. So we're just waiting for the scene to pass first. So we have a week left until that. I don't think Earl Grey tea is my, my favorite. It's probably not. Growth has gone down. We barely get basically don't get a surplus. Ah, <sighs> not ideal. Ching Yao Column Secret Report. Part of Central Committee of Military Commission since 1968. In accordance with the instructions of the South China Bureau, our column has been actively infiltrating and making contact with Zheng Jiang, Zheng Jiang, Lai Zhu, and other places. And after long-term of observation, we've made contact with the Committee of the Struggle Against Persecution, a local workers' underground mutual aid group in Lai Zhu, whose leader is Su Xiao Zhang. Su Zhao Shang, also known as Su Yushi, was born in Guangzhou in 1941 and was a Catholic and Buddhist. He joined the he joined the Fujitsu Hong Kong factory in 1959 and was dismissed from the Fujitsu because of his participation in a march and hunger strike in Hong Kong Central in connection with the suicide of Li Chunru in 1963. And then he moved to Lai Zhu, where he gradually changed his months to that of the revolutionary after a long period of oppression by the Japanese imperial enterprises and he secretly set up an underground workshop of the fighting against persecution. Oh, we're doing that one too, huh? Um, because of the recent changes in Baiping and Wuhan, Su Zhu Xiang organized a protest march on his own in order to respond to the righteousness of the act, and a column decided to assist him in the, expanding the scope of the uprising, and now the anti combat committee is taking control of the Zhang Jiang government, city government building and declared the town to be the Lai Zhu Peninsula. Now that the uprising has entered a state, uh, uh, phase of stalemate, we request the Central Committee to coordinate with our allies in Southeast Asia to provide material assistance and ideological guidance for Secretary of the Chong Ya Column Feng Baiju. Agree. Oh, look, they're down here. Su Xiao Zong. Finally. Let do Red Zang's plan. Um, disclosure sessions. One or two bad elements cannot see everyone forever. The masses. Uh, see and remember all sorts of bad deeds. And as long as the first person dares to come forward and expose them, there's no worry about not being able to dig up the black uh, uh, background of the bad elements. The victories of the masses, denunciation campaigns, the agrarian revolution, and the anti rightist movement are still to be seen. We should immediately launch denunciation meetings. Outbreak of the East China Uprising. Large scale democratic anti riot struggles have broken out one after another in the enemy occupied areas of Baiping, Wuhan, and Laizhou. With the momentum of a prairie fire, and the underground party organizations that we previously restored in these areas are now in operation, which is an excellent opportunity for us to infiltrate and shake up the enemy's rear and to strengthen the democratic and patriotic forces in the latter part of the country. Central Committee has already approved, approved an aid program for the Democratic and Patriotic Forces in the East, and has put forward a vision of inviting Democratic representatives from the East of Xi'an to take part in the convening of the National Political Consultative Congress or Conference on Democracy. And Kermit Luo Cheng has already mobilized intelligence services to go into full operation. We must see this as once in a lifetime opportunity. Always be ready. Yeah, Orgorty is definitely not my thing. Master of Balance. Nice. Recently, sporadic protests erupted in Beijing, Beijing and Wuhan, where participants have expressed their satisfaction with the national government's permanent discipline and the press of the reign of terror and have begun to organize marches. The protests were also reportedly accompanied by commemorations of democratic activities. Our activists who had died in China since the 60s, portraits of people such as Wen Yidao, Chu Anping, Yu Lo Qi, uh, Li Chunru, and Jiao Wei began to appear frequently in the marches. Hey, we have surplus finally. The Royal City government is still exercising restraint and appealing to the protests, but it cannot be ruled out that the Iron Horsemen will dri still drive in the streets, filled with dissidents, as they did seven years ago in Guangxi and Beijing. as a reenactment of the 1963 crisis. It's not our problem, but our gain. Oh, God. 
Eastern Democratic Uprising. Well, let's do this one first. While we bitterly attend with development, the suffering Chinese people in the East are not sitting still. Since the Yasuo crisis, the democratic and patriotic movements against imperialism have broken in Guangxi, Baiping, and other places, and in spite of brutal repression, sporadic protests are still going on and have grown strong in the wake of recent international domestic unrest. The democratic uprising in the East, represented by Baiping, Wuhan, and Laizu, are thriving with our responsibility and obligations to send support to them. Each insurgent region has its own strength, which represents their ability to resist repression by their pseudo government. And the strength will slowly decline over time, with the pseudo government launching direct and repressive action, and the strength of the regime falls below 30%. We'll support the democratic insurgents through a series of actions to maintain their strength. Once all three regions have been suppressed, it's highly likely that the disillusioned people of the East will remain indifferent to our liberation operations, but not radical. Each insurgent region has its own degree of radicalism. Representing the degree of radicalization of the democratic demands, and although we can guarantee the strength of these regions through our intelligence network and enemy occupied areas, we accordingly contribute to the degree of radicalism. If the average degree of radicalism in the three regions is greater than 50%, they will uh, independently convene the statehood conference of the Republic of China in Shanghai and will no longer cooperate with the democratic proposal to convene the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference in Xi'an. While for the revolutionary cause, both conferences would be milestones for the Chinese People's Milestone Victory, but for our party, the CP. PCC can be a great help to our war effort. So by ping. Wuhan. Oh god, this costs political power. Secretly guide in the strategy of struggle in the Vai Ping. Clandestine transfer material support to Vai Ping. Spreading anti Japanese patriotic ideas in Vai Ping. Sending underground party members to guide the Vai Ping democratic movement. Uprising changes. Power and radicalism will change. Congress coming out. Depending on the decree of radicalization in each location, there will be different results. Alright, so we need all of our political power then. Because right now... So we don't want radicalism too high. Seventy-five, huh? So that's interesting. A very interesting. But I think we'll end it there because I thought this would be the last episode. But just, there's just so much extreme reading to do. But next episode might be the last one. It might not be, as we still got more and more stuff to do. As the economy is not doing as well as it was before, but we're still doing all right. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in the next episode. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.